Can I? Yeah. You'll let me? I'll be part of your family. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. People have been asking them, but you know, they've seen you, so. Um, I've been up in Minnesota. Okay. Oh. My mother. Is she still up here? Or? My mother. Your mother. Oh. Yeah. But your mother in law. My mother in law is. I went up there.
and events. So let's stand this morning for the call to worship. Jesus initiates the new covenant with the Lord's Supper. Just prior to being handed over to sinners who will put him to death. Jesus became sin itself, that we may be purified and free of sin through his blood. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. As Jesus felt the separation between him and his Father, he knew his mission found completion as he uttered, It is Finished. Jesus, we worship you for your great love and sacrifice that we should be with you and honor forevermore. Thank you. Stay standing while the choir sings Hosanna, loud Hosanna, and our children come in waving the palms, and you can wave your palms too.
morning. What would be something that you probably know what this is? It is a crown. You know, I brought this crown to remind me of something. Back when I was a little girl, it was many, many years ago, in school, my teacher, when it was our birthday, used to put a crown on us, and we were we became the student of the day. It was pretty cool to be the student of the day. We looked forward to that day. Did that can hurt yet? So we got to do fun stuff like we get to be a teacher's helper. We would go and get me take the attendance down to the office. That was before that computers to do that for us. And then we would um, take something to another teacher if, if something needed to be delivered. Or we'd be first in line. That was the best part. First to go outside. First to go to the cafeteria. First to go to, re uh, to special area. It was great, right? It's fun to be a student of the day. Well, the other kids would look up to us and go, man, I can't wait to live my day. But you know, it was just that one day we got to have all that excitement, right? Right? Well, it reminds me a little bit of a story about a man who came to Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. And he came into Jerusalem riding a donkey. Now, he was a king. So he came in, and the people were all excited. That I have a picture of right here. They were all excited about to see and meet this king. So, you know what they did? They laid their cloaks down on the road, and they brought up palm branches just like we did, and they waved their palm branches, trying to get the attention, and letting this man know they were there. Now, you guys probably know which man I'm talking about, right? Who is that man? Jesus, that's right. Jesus was that king coming into town that everybody wanted to see. And they were so excited that they were waving those palm branches saying, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Just like we did with that song this morning and waving our palm branches, right? Well, the only problem with this is he was only their king for the day. It's kind of like I was just that king for the day. Because later that same week, guess what happened? Many of those, huh? Yes, many of those same people turned against Jesus. They arrested him. They beat him. They crucified him and hung him on that cross. In fact, they changed that crown to this. This was the crown of thorns that they placed on Jesus' head. And as he carried that big old heavy cross with this crown of thorns, and they pushed it further down his head, it wasn't a good feeling, was it? No. But you know what? The Bible tells us that one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the glory to God the Father. So why should we wait? Why don't we confess now that Jesus is our Lord? Right? Jesus wants us to be, Jesus wants to be the ruler of your life every day. He doesn't want to be your king for just one day. He wants to be your king every day. You think we can do that? Yeah. All right. The easiest thing to do is just tell other people about Jesus. Tell them what he did for you and for me and for others. Okay, let's pray. Oh, Father, we sometimes are quick to say Jesus is Lord, but we're slow to show it in our lives. Help us to be faithful followers. Help us to be able to share the good news with everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this morning as we continue in our worship service and come to our time of prayer, we want to pray for those in the hospital, for our confirmation class that will be meeting today after worship, for our country as we are dispensing the COVID vaccine. 2.5 million people a day are receiving the vaccine, and that brings us hope. And the governor has lowered the age to 40 years of age, so for those who can get the vaccine. And I want to just say, too, that the health department will be here the week after Easter, and they will be dispensing Johnson & Johnson. So if you want to come and get your vaccine, let James know. Call the church office, and we're going to have a list, and they will bring as many as we need. So just one jab, all right? So I hope you will be here and everybody will be able to have this vaccine and things will be better by, I think, the middle of July, they say. So um, let's go to God in prayer this morning. Gracious and loving God, today we shout Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Like those who welcomed you to Jerusalem those many years ago, you are our King, and we praise you. We thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness and your sacrifice for us and for the gift of eternal life. When we face the storms of life, you are with us. You get us. You understand us. You have authority in our lives. So fill us with the Holy Spirit today. Give us strength and encouragement to face the week ahead. Today we lift up and we pray for those who are in the hospital. We ask that you would bring healing and strength to them. We thank you for getting us through the COVID pandemic so far and pray that you will continue to keep us safe. And we are very thankful for those who have developed these vaccines, who are distributing them and administering them. And this morning we lift up our healthcare workers our child care workers, school teachers, police officers, and first responders. Protect them and watch over them, Lord. And we thank you that your ways are higher than our ways, and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Help us to be obedient to your teachings and examples. This morning we pray all of this in the powerful and precious name of Jesus. As we pray together the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, 
Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. So our sermon series through Lent has been Jesus, the God who knows your name, based on the book by Max Cicada. And we, we have looked at Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel literally means God with us. And he is our friend, friend of sinners, right? So that's good news for you and good news for me. And he is our teacher. And he performs miracles, the miracle worker, turned water into wine, walked on the water, and calmed the wind and the sea. And now today, he is the Lamb of God. On this day, Palm Sunday, 2,000 and plus years ago, Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem on the donkey. And the people took their cloaks and their robes and the palm branches and they weighed them, and they honored him, and worshipped him, and praised him. Because this was a reminder of when the kings in the Old Testament, like King David, would ride into Jerusalem victorious after battle. And so Jesus is sending a message. I am your king. And they said, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So that was a high, holy celebration on Palm Sunday, but only a few days later, we see and hear a Jesus that we've never seen or heard before. He gathers his closest friends together in the upper room to celebrate the Passover meal. And then afterwards, they go to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he says his soul is crushed with grief. He, he knows what's coming. And, and Jesus knew that he was to drink from the cup of suffering. Now, the word cup in the Bible means God's anger, God's judgment, and punishment. See, he took on the sins of the world for you and for me. He, God is a holy God, and God requires us to be holy. But he sees our rebellious nature. And our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, and we might have our, a tendency not to use our bodies in the way that God would intend for us to use them. We might use our tongues to say things that shouldn't be said, to hurt others, to wound others. We may do things with our bodies that, that hurt others. Opal and I went to, headed to the mall yesterday to do a little shopping. And we went to go on the turnpike, and I changed lanes before I went through the toll plaza. Now, I thought you needed to slow down before that toll plaza, 25 miles per hour. Rusty says no, but I shifted, and I slowed down to 25, 
and the man behind me was not very happy. He honked his horn. And so I just didn't want to merge as soon as I got through. So then after I got through the, the toll plaza, I just decided to go even slower. <laughs> circle. And sure enough, as soon as we got to where there were two lanes, he just threw them around me, you know, and went on. So whether you are agitated by other people, or whether you're the agitator, it's a sin. And I confess and I ask for forgiveness. And sometimes we just, you know, use, do things that we're not supposed to do. We will use our brains to think of things that might take things from others that don't belong to us or do things that don't bring honor and glory to God. In this way, we're rebellious. And so in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus chose to receive the punishment of the things that we've said and done, the harm that we've done to others and to God. He stood in our place. And so Jesus and the disciples were celebrating the Passover meal, the Seder meal. You remember that. And see, the Passover is the greatest celebration for the people of Israel. Because this was the time that they would remember and commemorate the um, time they were freed from the Egyptians from slavery and bondage. So for them, it's like our Easter. You know, and so every year they would gather and they would have a meal and they would eat roasted lamb and the bread would be unleavened bread because they did not have enough time so there was no leaven placed in the bread and they would have bitter herbs to remind them of the bitterness of being in, enslaved and in bondage to the Egyptians. And then they would drink four cups of wine throughout the meal. Jesus, however, changes the Passover. And that's the first thing this morning is the Lamb of God. It says that he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. This is it. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after the supper. He said, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And so on the cross, this is what Jesus did. He gave his body for us. His blood was shed for us. He took our place. He was the Lamb of God. And in order to understand this a little bit better, we have to go all the way back to the Old Testament, to the book of Leviticus. And, and when an Israelite sinned, he was to bring a sin offering to the priest. It would be a lamb. The lamb was sacrificed and slaughtered. And the priest would then take the blood and put on the altar, on the horns of the altar. And then they would roast the lamb. And so he burns the lamb on the altar. And then Leviticus 4.35 says this, in this way. The priest will make atonement for him for the sin he has committed, and he will be forgiven. Now Jesus comes to be the lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. John 10, 11 says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We're the sheep, right? And greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. So Jesus is arrested after the Last Supper, and they're in the garden. And he's taken before Caiaphas, the high priest, and tried as a criminal. They then send him to Pilate, who questions him. Are you the king of the Jews, he asked him. And Jesus says, is that your own idea, or did others talk to you about me? And Pilate says, what is it that you have done? And Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. So Jesus is sentenced to be crucified. And he carries his cross to the place of the skull. And the second point is that God saves. The 
But scripture tells us, this is Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, we have a sin nature, we, you and I. We will do the wrong thing. We'll try not to, but we still do it. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, and he placed them in the Garden of Eden, and he gave them everything that they needed and wanted. Uh, delicious food, fruits of all kinds, beautiful flowering trees, plants. The river ran through the garden to water it. And God said, you may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, except for the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when you eat of it, you will surely die. And so Eve took the fruit. She gave some to Adam. They ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And sin entered the world. When the angel spoke to Joseph before Jesus was born, he said to Joseph, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So this name Jesus comes from the Hebrew Yeshua. And Yeshua means Jehovah, God, saves. Jesus' name literally means God saves. So what did Jesus come to do? He came to save us. God saves us through Jesus. Jesus came to save us, not just from our enemies, our challenges, or difficulties, but from ourselves too. Right? Right? We know what that's like. This past year, right? Where have we been? We've been at home. We've been isolated. We've been alone with the Lord. And it's just like me and God. And what happens after I, you know, realize, ah, oh, I've got to do some changing. There's some things in me that God doesn't want me to hang on to or keep. And, and I feel like that's what it's been for us as we have been through all of this time of not being able to be with family and friends. Last week, my sister and her husband came. We had dinner for the first time in over a year. We were able to be together. The longest time for us to have not seen each other. And with COVID, we have had to face the fear of death. Amen? Because we know loved ones who have, have gotten COVID and have passed away. And so when we take a risk, we think about that. And as we face our shadow sides, you know, knowing that it's even more amazing and a blessing that Jesus has come to save us from our sins. And that brings us to the last point. It is finished. In 1 Peter 2, 24, we read this. Christ carried our sins in his body on the cross. So we would stop living for sin and start living for what is right. And on the cross, as Jesus was dying, he lifted up his head and he said, it is finished. So the question is, what was finished? You know, it was the, the resurrection had not occurred, right? But we know what it's like to start something and not finish something, don't we? I, I have a book uh, on by the nightstand that I started a long time ago, got about halfway through and then just can't finish it. You know, sometimes we um, start a diet, but we, you know, it doesn't last very long, or we begin to write a letter and just never get around to finishing it, or get a card, buy a card to send to someone, and it's still there on the desk. It also shows up in painful areas in our lives, this not being able to finish something, like a resulting broken marriage or a faith. That is, sometimes we're here and sometimes we're not. Or we go from job to job. 
Maybe this morning you are considering giving up. It's been rough. And this global pandemic has been more than you bargained for. You, you've not seen anything like this in your whole life. Do you feel like giving up? Well, if you do, I want you to remember that Jesus did not give up. He stayed on the cross. The determination that he had on the cross. He didn't quit. He was tempted, but he didn't. And what does it mean when he said it is finished, when the resurrection hadn't yet occurred? It meant that his redeeming work of saving us from our sins is completed, is done. You know the, the hymn that we sing on Easter Sunday? Love's redeeming work is done, fought the fight, the victory won. The job was finished. The song is sung. The blood has been poured out. The sacrifice has been made. The fire remained. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that because you endured to the very end, we are forgiven. Hebrews 10, 14 says, With one sacrifice, Jesus made perfect forever those who are being made holy. No more sacrifice needs to be made. No more deposits are necessary. Jesus even used a banking term that means the total payment has been paid to proclaim it is finished. And because the task is finished and paid in full, there's no more that you or I can do or need to do. And that, my friends, is good news. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we cannot imagine what your son Jesus went through on the cross. We thank you for his determination that he did not give up, for his sacrifice for our sins so that we might have eternal life. And because of that, help us to live differently, with more grace and more compassion as we contemplate the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you this morning to give to the missions and ministries of this church. And if you're worshiping online, there's an opportunity to give by clicking on the online giving button at www.firstchurchsaintcloud.org. So as we continue to be in mission and ministry, we um, are thankful that the confirmation class cooked and served the Elmer's Kitchen hot meal to go last Sunday from 2 to 3. And they serve 59 meals. So great job. And we have both online and in-person worship. And we have online and in-person Bible studies. And our preschool meets Monday through Thursday with 58 children. So God is good. And we are thankful for all that he's doing. So let's pray this morning. Almighty God, our Father, you said you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Heavenly Father give to you? And you certainly are giving us so many good gifts. We thank you for the many blessings you give. May we share the abundance that you have provided us with those in need and for your kingdom. We thank you for the opportunities to give and to be a part of the mission and ministries of your church. Bless and multiply these gifts today. Use them for the building up of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is In Christ Alone. Would you please stand?
receive the benediction and remember to wait for the ushers to dismiss you. We'll go out all four doors today. Go forth knowing that Jesus did it all for you. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.